Hello friends, so today we are going to discuss the D and E problem from the code forces round 644 division 3. So the first D question is, it states that Polycarp wants to buy exactly N shovels. Okay, so it means that there should be exactly N uh, shovels you want to buy and you have to buy the and the shop sells packages with N shovels. The store has K types of shovels which are numbered from K the ith type consisting of exactly i shovels okay so then polycarp want to choose one type of the package and then buy several packages of this type find the smallest number of packages polycarp can buy to get exactly n shovels so when you see exactly n shovels it means that you have to divide that n such that it you have to find out the factors of n so for finding out the factors you can easily do it in login time so let's move to our drawing board and I'll tell you how. So for finding out the factors of 8, let's see, I want to find out the factors of 8 and k is equal to 7, which is the first example. You can move from i equal to 1 till under root of 8, okay, which is equal to like 3 or like it is actually less than 3, it's, it's 2. Okay, so what now, what are the factors of 8 are? If I take i equal to 1, then the factors will be i and n by i. Okay, so as you can see, the factor of 8 can be 1 or 1 divided by 8, which is 8. So we are taking both the ends. Now, if I move i till here, does this 2 divides 8? Yes, so the factor can be 2 and n which is actually 8 so if we divide 8 divided by 2 it become 4 so these are all the factors now we cannot move, move ahead so these are all the factors okay so now we want to find out if now there are packages from the size 1 till k okay so if we see that if we buy a package of size 1 then how many shovels we want like if there is a package which has only one shovel and so how many shovels or how many packages we want to buy so we want to buy 8 because we want to find out total we have to buy 8 shovels and each packet has only one shovel ok but as you can see there are different type of packages in which there can be one shovel, two shovel, three shovel etc imagine you have boxes in which each box can be a one uh, like shovel or two shovel or three shovels and the possible number of packages available is equal to seven so you can have one two three and such as such that so you can either take one shovel pack of quantity eight okay or you can take a package of which have eight shovels of quantity one but this is not possible because you cannot go more than seven shovels Okay, so now you can either take one shovel, one shovel pack of and quantity it. This can be one option. Now, there can be another option in which you can buy two shovel pack. You can buy four packets of this quantity. Okay, so if you buy four packages of quantity two, or you can do, you can buy a package of size four and the quantity should be two. So this is the minimum quantity we want to buy because we can buy a shovel pack which are having 4 shovels and the quantity will be 2 but we have to every time see that whether the pack we want to buy that we want to buy a pack of which are having 4 shovels it is acceptable or not so it is within key or not ok so that's the main code I'll tell you I'll take the input of n and k then the minimum is initialize as very large number because you want to find out the minimum packages we will move from i equal to 1 till under root of n we can write it this way which is simpler then we will check whether n modulus i is equal to 0 which means that this number divide n perfectly then only we can find out the uh, the packages ok so now if it's done and i is less than k so we want to check is i less than k so it means this type of package is available. If this type of package is available, the minimum 
quantity we want to buy for this package is n divided by 2. And the same for the other side, if n modulus i is equal to 0 and n divided by k is also possible less than equal to k, in which in which we mean that this size package is also available, then the quantity of packages we want to buy is i. Okay, so these are the possible things we, all, we always minimize our answer and we just print out the minimum. So that's the code for the D problem. Let's move to the E problem. The E problem statement states that you can read the question, but there is a grid in which there are two n, uh, like there are two n military stands in which there are cannons. They shot uh, like balls in in this direction or in this direction. So these balls go till the end, and it will stop either if it hits the wall, which is this, or if there is a ball in front of it. So let's assume, as you can see in this example, this cannon shoots first and the ball goes to the end and because it hits the wall, it stops here. Then this cannon again hit a ball, ball, like ball, and it will go ahead till it's either reached the ball or the wall. Because there is a ball ahead of it, it will stop here. Now this cannon throws a ball and because there is a ball ahead, it will stop. So this is a valid uh, like sequence or a matrix in which you know that this is possible. So they have actually given you some uh, conditions, situations in which they don't tell you that whether which cannon throw the ball or in which order they throw, but you have to verify whether this matrix after some throwing of the balls is possible or not. So how we can do it? Just think how any ball reach at, at any position. So why this ball reach at this position? It means that it can either be a ball on the right side of it or a ball should be on the top of it. Uh, yeah. Then, uh, oh sorry, there, there should be a ball below it or there should be a ball right to it. Then only this ball stops here. Okay, so we will only look for the cases in which this is not possible. Okay, so what we can do is we can search in this grid, this part, and it'll take you to the drawing board. I have taken down this. There's a one grid. If we just look at this part only and only see all those balls which are one. So how can this ball stop here? It means that either this ball stop here when there is a ball on the right of it or there is a ball below it because this there is a ball which throws here. It stops here only if there is a ball below it at this position and if you throw a ball from here it will stop only at this position if there is a ball on the right of it. Then only this ball stops here. So that's what we check for every one in this square. If every one satisfies the condition such that there is a there is a ball either on the right of it or on the down of it, any of the case possible, then it's okay. Else we return false. So we will iterate over all the uh, possible positions. So we take the input of all the strings because there is there are uh, these strings, they are four strings. So we take the input of all the four strings. Then we initialize the answer to true. Then we will start moving from this position. So this is n minus one. This is n minus two, and this is also from n minus two from both sides. So we will do from i equal to n minus two to zero. J is from n minus two till zero. And what we will check this if this position is one, and the position on the right and down. Any of them, any of them becomes, uh, so any of them becomes one. Any of them become one, then it's good. Or else, if both of them are zero, it means that if the down one and the right one both are zero, it means that we cannot this position or this configuration is not good. So we just return false. Take the answer false. And then we just check whether our answer is equal to true, then we return yes, else we return no. So I hope you understand the code and the logic for both the questions. If you like this explanation, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.